Hello, I'm Atubo George. Now, there is no way I'm going to just leave you the way I left you yesterday without continuing, you know, what I was talking about. Uh, truly, you see, a lot of pastors make this mistake. And I'm, I'm telling you this. You can learn. If you're a pastor watching me right now, you can learn from this, truly. You don't look at the problem of your congregation and use that gauge to teach them. You may see the issue. You may see the problem. It's important. You see. But what you do is to take it before the Lord and put your desire before him and say, Lord, I, I don't like the fact that my, my members are not doing well financially. You take it before the Lord. I don't like the fact that my, my members are not getting married. Maybe you have a lot of sisters in your congregation that are not married or brothers even that are not married. Lord, what, what do we do? Don't start getting, you know, you know, you say, okay, uh, let's start having singles meetings. So only singles can gather. So when, when, when we are gathered like that, they can see each other. If it's not a command from the Holy Spirit, it's going to lead you into trouble. Oh yeah, it's going to lead you into trouble. See, so you go before the Lord and let the Lord begin to give you words. I found out this many years ago. You see, sometimes you, you use yourself to judge. See, the Bible says you judge yourself so that you will not be judged. Now, you look at yourself and be sincere with yourself. How have you, able, if you're doing well, you know, as a believer, how have you able to survive or how have you able to grow to this point? You, if you carefully look at yourself, you realize that it has nothing to do with a specific thing you did or you just realize that it's because you increased the knowledge. That's the truth. So, what you need the most, what your congregation needs the most, is to know the personality of Jesus Christ and who God is. As they know him, they will become better husbands. As they know him, they will become responsible parents. As they know him, they will become better at their jobs. As they know him, because as they are looking at him, the Bible says, we all, with unveiled faces, beholding as in the mirror the glory of God, are being changed into the same image from glory to glory. Do you know what that means? Today, it can be financial glory I'm changing into because that's what the Holy Spirit is revealing to me. Tomorrow, it can be marital glory. Next tomorrow, it can be glory in my academics. It can be glory in my, 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 my work, my business. I'm just being transformed into the same glory that I see. Now, question then is, is Jesus a businessman? Is Jesus a husband? Is Jesus a, a, a family man? So, how do I look at Jesus and then I'm becoming a better businessman, I'm becoming a better husband, I'm becoming a better family man. I'll tell you the truth. Because when we look at Jesus, we are seeing the embodiment of perfection. Praise God. And as I look at him, a transformation is taking place. So here is a man who beats his wife, for example. You know, and then he begins to look at, you know, you, you sit him down and say, no, you know, what you're doing is wrong. What you're doing is bad. You have to stop it. How can you beat a woman? You even abuse him on top. You know that kind of thing. You say, how can you, a man, be beating a woman? You can go to the boxing ring. It may not help him. What is going to help that man for life is the day he begins to look at the personality of Jesus. As he is, he is seeing who Jesus is. You know, Colossians tells us, let the words of Christ dwell in you richly. Richly. See, that's it. How does the words of Christ dwell in you richly? When the Holy Ghost begins to speak to you. Brothers and sisters, there are no two ways about this truth. If you do, I told you, I told you this, I think beginning of the year. If you don't ha hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you, if you cannot beat your chest and say, God, I communicate with God. Not just one way I, I used to pray every day. No, no. You feel, if you don't beat your chest to say that, you know, yeah, I know when the Holy Spirit is talking to me. You're in big trouble. Yes, I said it. You're in big trouble. And you need help. So settle it now. 
Because that's the only way you grow in the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ. No man can teach you this. The only thing a man can tell you, even me, the only thing I can tell is my testimonies. Now, for example, I'm sharing this with you because that's my experience. That's my testimony. Now, as I'm sharing it with you, you cannot enjoy it because I told you. You can only enjoy it because when you, be, when, when you believe what I have said, and then you go back to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to enjoy that fellowship that Pastor George is talking about. Now, when you pray like that, then you bring the Holy Spirit near to you. Then he begins to cause you to experience the same thing I'm experiencing. Now, that's what John said in 1 John 1. He says, we're writing these things to you so that you also will have fellowship with us. I'm sharing these things now with you so that you also will have the same kind of fellowship that I'm having. Who With who? With the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Praise God. And that is eternal life. And that is how you assess all things that pertain to life and godliness i'll tell you something when you know your ability and you grow to that point where you realize that you know what i can never be broke never never it's not a confession it's a realization how do you realize it because the lord will cause you to see just like jesus he was with peter tax collectors came what did he say? Oh, we don't have money right now, so maybe you go and come tomorrow. No, no, no. Jesus knew, you know what? I can never be broke. See? That's a knowledge. So, what, oh, oh, Lord, what do we do? Send Peter to, to, with his hook to the river to catch a fish. There's more, I'll send you money through a fish. And Jesus understood very well that the Holy Spirit wasn't saying, Peter will sell the fish and get money. So, he told Peter exactly what the Holy Spirit said, even though it didn't make sense. See, take your fish, go to the hook. I remember many years ago, still in school, then we just finished the lecture. And I had this wonderful friend of mine. And he, he walked up to me and said, Ah, Pastor, I'm so hungry. And then I said, Okay, the truth I didn't have any cash on me at that day. So I said, um, So what do you want? Say, Come and buy me food. I said, Oh, sorry, I don't have cash on me right now. And then he began to laugh. He said, Pastor, so you can be broke. You that used to say you can never be broke. I said, No. I don't have cash on me, it doesn't mean I'm broke. He said, okay, if you're not broke, buy me food. I said, okay. You want to eat? Yes. I said, okay, where do you want to eat? He told me exactly where he wanted to eat. I said, okay, let's go there. And then we got there. As we were entering the place, I, you know, you see, when you move by faith, someone, a member of my fellowship, was walking out of the same restaurant. And I just called him. I said, come, this guy is hungry. Can you take care of him? And he said, oh, sure, I I'll take care of him. And I said, all right, so he's in your hands. Give him what he wants to eat. And then the guy, when he finished eating, came looking for me. I said, how did you do that? I said, do what? He said, how did you arrange that? I said, you were with me all the time. Did you hear me call anyone? <laughs> you see, because you know you can never be broke. We'll continue tomorrow. Have a beautiful day today. Bye-bye.